Hello everyone, my name is The Dreaming Gamer, and welcome to Dreamer Talk. So that intro that you just heard, it, I got it from pixabay.com. It is a f site where you can get free music for your podcast, for your um, videos, it just has a huge list of stuff, and I'll include a, a link in it in the in the description. So, this is the first official episode of Dreamer Talk, which is my discussion where I talk about really just anything. I talk about anything video game related, any topic, game, whatever that I think is interesting. Now, if you have seen episode zero which a few of you have, and I thank you for everyone who took a listen to it. That was originally uploaded on my YouTube channel. So it was going to be start on this like discussion series that I wanted on YouTube, but then I decided to just branch it out into an actual podcast, which is what this is. Um, so let me start by just introducing myself. Like I said, my name is The Dreaming Gamer. I have been playing video games for almost my, my entire life, as far back as I can remember. The first system I remember ever owning is a NES, and the first game I remember owning, or at least remember seeing, ironically, I'm sure I saw it Super Mario Brothers, but the first game I remember seeing was Castlevania 2. I know not the greatest game to get to get people into gaming, but that's how I, how I got started. My first game I ever beat was Goonies 2. I beat that game. I wasn't very old. Um, but I think what really cemented me as a gamer was the Super Nintendo on the 64. Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda. That really like cemented my love of gaming. And it's a, a love that I've kept through my entire life. So, But for today's first episode, I want to talk about something that happened earlier this week. That has really been that has really shaken the ground of the gaming industry, and that's Microsoft's purchase of ZeniMax Media. So, they purchased the company for seven point five billion dollars, which is a lot of money. So, with ZeniMax, they with the purchase of ZeniMax, they gain id Software, Arcane Studios, Machine Games, Tango GameWorks. And Bethesda Softworks, which is of course Bethesda and the online department, which is ZeniMax Online Studios. So this purchase is big. It's it's really game changing. I don't think we've ever seen a purchase of this magnitude in gaming before. Z the ZeniMax companies are an influential batch because, like Machine Games, they make they make Wolfenstein. Uh, Arcane Studios is Dishonored and Prey. Id Software, I mean, Id Software is Doom and Quake. But the big one, the big one, is Bethesda Softworks. With Bethesda is, it's a big company. It's an influential company. And to know that they are now part of, part of Xbox, that they are now part of Microsoft, is, it's really interesting. It's just something that I don't think anyone was really expecting. I know there was rumors about Microsoft was going to do something big and crazy. But I don't think anyone expected them to just be all like, oh, hey, now ZeniMax is part of us. That's, no, that's just, that's just big. Now that the ZeniMax companies are part of Microsoft, they're going to be rolled into the Xbox Game Studios. I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about the short term, I want to talk about the long term, and I want to talk about my opinion. And my opinion will be in between those two topics. So, short term. Short term is not much is going to change. Arcane Studios has already announced that their PS5 exclusive Deathloop will still be a PS5 exclusive. The Switch port of Doom Eternal, which is not being handled by id Software, it's being handled by someone else, is still going to go through. So nothing short term is going to change. But long term is where it's at. So with the, with the change, with them now being owned by Microsoft, what, is the, what does that mean? Well, first, that now means that the ZeniMax companies are part of... Being part of the Xbox Game Studios means that they join the ranks of Mojang, WareWare, Obsidian, as just this this 
batch of talent that Xbox now has. Uh, side note, this also means that Microsoft owns the entirety of the Fallout series. Because Obsidian is made up of people from Black Isle Studios, the original creators, creators of Fallout. And now they own Bethesda, which is, as we all know, the current creators. Now, the question is, how will Microsoft treat Bethesda and the other companies? Because if we look at history, history is not the greatest judge. Because when they... The last major, well, I guess the last major company they bought was Mojang. But before that, when they bought Rareware, which was this, you know, this the most the '90s most influential and critically acclaimed company, or at least a highly critically acclaimed company, they took them. They took this batch of talent and then they just grinded them into the ground. And now we just don't have anything from them anymore. However, if we look at recent history, they have allowed Obsidian and Mojang to just operate as they please like minecraft is still on every system it's still released on all consoles so but the big topic that everyone has been talking about is exclusives what does this mean for exclusives does this mean that the zenimax companies will games will now be exclusive for the xbox does this mean the new doom is going to be only for the xbox uh elder scrolls 6 is only going to be for the xbox and i've heard people throw that around and say that um, that it'll be that it'll be just an Xbox exclusive company, and I disagree with that. Given that Xbox Microsoft has been marketing its newest console, the Series X and S, as one for the gamers, I believe they are not going to shut out the gamers. They, I believe that the new games will work on a timed exclusive, so at least for the bigger ones. So your Fallout Five, Elder Scrolls Six, um, maybe Dishonored, they will be they will probably come out first on the Xbox X and S, and then you know you'll buy them because they'll talk about oh it's only for this system, and then they'll drove out the DLC, and then once we get to the one year anniversary, they will release the Game of the Year edition for the PS Five and we release it for the Xbox. And even Bethesda themselves have stated that their games will be case by case. That their games will no longer be just blanket on all systems. It'll be depending on the game. So, I do believe the smaller games, your Wolfenstein, The Evil Within, they will probably become Xbox exclusives. But Bethesda games, I don't know, I just don't see Bethesda becoming solely developing for the Xbox. And I think this because the company is incredibly profitable. I always have a joke about Bethesda that they just they just print their own money with their games. Even when they have disastrous games like Fallout 76, they still manage to make their money back. They still are profitable. So I doubt Microsoft will ruin that because they're a company and they're interested in making money. So I doubt they'll run that into the ground. But... You know, I'm sure people said that about Ware. When they bought out Ware, they were probably like, oh, yeah, you know, great company. Now, what's Microsoft going to do with them? Microsoft's going to grind them into the ground. That's what Microsoft's going to do. So, I do think there is an advantage to Microsoft now being the parent company of ZeniMax. Because it gives these companies a bigger safety blanket. Now, it's like ZeniMax was a big, was a big company. And their games... The, comp- the studios within them were very influential, and they made some cri- some criti- critically acclaimed games. Not just Bethesda, but I mean like id Software, like that's Doom, that's Quake. Like, that's... We have first-person shooters because of id. And then, Arcane Studios makes Dishonored and Prey. We also got Wolfenstein from Machine Games. So, I think that because now they'll be protected by Microsoft and all their money... That maybe these companies will be willing to expand, to grow, to experiment with their games and their concepts. Now, I also understand that as a company, Microsoft may make cuts. Some of the studios may, instead of growing, they may shrink. And I hope they don't do that because there's there's talent and there's people there who really give it their all. And I would hate to see them, you know, especially in today's society, for them to really, like, have their company go under. So I hope Microsoft doesn't cut and eliminate 
positions, but I wouldn't be surprised because companies do it all the time, especially when they buy. Remember when Disney bought Fox, they slashed and shrunk the company as well. See, the thing is, we don't know why Microsoft bought. What's the primary reason why Microsoft bought ZeniMax? Could they have bought them out because they wanted exclusives for the Xbox? Because they wanted to bolster the Xbox library? Possible. Did they buy them because they saw potential and they saw how they could grow their brand? That's true too. Or did they buy them because they were like, oh, hey, hey, let's spend $7.5 billion and make $14 billion in five years. That's entirely possible too. They could have saw all this profit and just sitting there and then, oh, yeah, let's, let's buy it. One topic I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about long term is Game Pass. So, as many of you know, Xbox has that Xbox Game Pass, which I really don't know too much about it. I guess you pay a subscription and you have access to all these games, especially when they first come out. And then, now that ZeniMax is part of Xbox, part of Xbox Game Studios, those games can now exclusively be found on Game Pass, or potentially will be. So, that I can see happening. I can see them saying, hey, Fallout 4 does not need to be on the on PS Plus, whatever PlayStation has. Instead, it needs to be on on us only. And I can see them doing that with, with pretty much all their games. Now, those types of exclusives I could see happening. Really, all we can do now is just wait. We just have to wait and see what Microsoft does now that they own ZeniMax. I'm still standing that life will go will go on normally, but I don't know. And I also want to address another rumor that's floating around that Microsoft is now going to buy Sega. And this all started because of a joke about how this tweet that they made about still iconic. And when you take when you rearrange the letters, you get Sonic, and it's a blue control. And they're talking about a blue controller. Uh, I do not think that that's some secret code for them to buy out Sega. But you know, if they buy Sega, then you know I'll be making another video, uh, another podcast about it. All right, everyone. So that was my first episode of Dreamer Talk. A more this one was more of a news focused one, and I'll do those occasionally as interesting news stories news stories pop up. But I want to thank you guys for listening. It, you, you know, if you have any questions, if you have any, um, any suggestions as to how I can improve this, then please let me know. I will include a link down in the description. This will also be uploaded on the on my YouTube channel. That way, you can maybe go there and leave leave it. I'm still trying to really understand how podcasts work and how what I need to do for podcasts. So this is still very much a work in progress. But yeah, again, I want to thank you guys for listening and I will see and I will catch y'all next time.